Hey, what's up, Musers? This is John at muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this video tutorial, I'll be showcasing how to use the solo type widget found at museforyoushop.com. So here's the first example: solo type automatic typing for your Adobe Muse website. Another example here: change speed of typing, have multiple typing text boxes, then change font size change font size, type, and color of text, and muse for you awesome websites plus no code. So this is the preview page. Uh, in this tutorial, I'll be showcasing where to access the widget and how to use it. So let's begin. So here I'm in Adobe Muse. So the first thing I wanna do is go to the library panel to the right here. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library. And in the search bar here, I'm going to type in Solo Type. So here we have the Add First and the Solo Type widget. So I'm going to go ahead and click, hold, and drag the Add First and place it at the top of my Adobe Muse website. The next widget I'll bring in is the Solo Type widget. So here I'll click, hold, and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. So here we have the widget options. So we have instance number. If you have multiple text boxes, you'll want to change the instance number. Each new text box requires a new instance number. Here's where you'll put in the text. You can change the text color, the font size. The font size is in EM, so 1 EM equals 16 pixels and you can change the font weight. You can set it to none and use the, the font weight that comes uh, predetermined within the font, and I'll showcase that as well in this tutorial. You can change the letter spacing between the letters. You can change the line height in between the lines, so if there's multiple lines, you can change the, the line height, and you can align the text to the left, center, or the right. Okay, so here I've placed the widget, and already we have typing text. So if I'll preview, I'll go to File, Preview Page and Browser, and I'll zoom out, and there we can see that text is typing. Looks good. So let me go back into the widget, and let's look at a few more options. So here we have the typing section, and if I click on the typing section, we can change the type speed, the back speed, which is the speed at which the text gets deleted, the start delay, how long you wanna wait before the text starts typing, the back delay, how long you want to wait before the text gets deleted. So it's in milliseconds, one second equals, uh, what, 1000 milliseconds equals one second. So if I were to change this to 1000, the typing speed would be one character or one letter per second. Then the same for the back speed, I can make it larger. The start delay, I could set more of a delay before the text starts typing. And the back delay, I could add more, uh, more timing to that as well. So now we'll have a slower typing. Let me zoom out here. So I'll file, preview page, and browser. And as we see, it takes one second, and then the text starts typing, and it's typing much slower. So in the typing section, you can control the speed of the typing. So now for the cursor section. So we have this section here, and if I click on it, we have these options here. So you can actually change the cursor character. So if I were to change this to uh, an at symbol, the cursor would be an at symbol. I can change the size of the cursor by changing the font size here. And again, 1EM equals uh, 16 pixels. I can change the cursor speed, the blinking speed of the cursor. So if I change this to a second, it'll blink really slowly. Um, and I can change the opacity as well. The opacity is the visibility of the cursor. So zero is not visible, and one is a fully solid cursor. 0.5 is a bit more see-through for the cursor and not as solid. And you can change the font weight, for, font weight for the cursor for fonts that allow you to choose a font weight. You can also disable the cursor by unselecting this, or enable the cursor by selecting this that says show cursor. So now if I preview in the browser, we're gonna see the cursor is an at symbol. And we have the text typing really slow, so everything types really slow. So let me go ahead and go back into the widget options. 
I'll go back into typing and I'll make everything uh, quick again or a bit faster. So we have 55 milliseconds for the typing speed. The back speed is 30 uh, milliseconds. Start delay is 500 milliseconds and the back delay is 500 milliseconds. If you didn't want the typing to loop or to delete and start over, you would simply uncheck the looping option here. So let me showcase that actually. So I'll uncheck loop and I'll preview in the browser. And it'll just type once and stop. It will not delete and start over. Okay, let me go back to the options and let me make the font size a bit bigger so we can actually see the text a bit better. So if I change this to three, we have that there. I can change the letter spacing to five, the spacing in between the letters and the line height. The line height here doesn't have a specific unit. It basically follows the font unit here. So if the font size is 3EM, the line height will be uh, 3EM as well. So one, if you set this to one, it'll be relative to the font size. If you set this to two, then the line height will be 6EM. And not sure why that did that there. Oh, it got a little bit taller. So as we can see, the line height is now 6EM but I want it to be relative to the font size, so I'll just set it to one. So as we can see, it's set to one, and the text looks really good with the line height there. So I'll preview, and then we have bigger text. And you'll notice that the text didn't finish, and this is a good example. If the text doesn't finish typing, just make the widget container a bit wider. It's just saying it needs a little more space to register that it wants to go to a new line. So it has plenty of space to go to the next line. The other thing you could do is create a break in between lines. So if you knew where you wanted to break the text, we could go into the text section and to add a break in the, in the text, you wouldn't hit enter here. So you wouldn't, for instance, add a lot of space or anything like that. You would insert a break tag and a break tag is, looks like this. So it's kind of that arrow next to the M on your keyboard. You hold down shift and select the left arrow then you type in BR and then a backslash and then the right arrow that's next to the left arrow and it's near the M button on your keyboard. And then, so there I've uh, split up Muse for You, awesome websites plus no code. So I could add a break here as well. And this gives me more control of where I want to break the text. So as we can see, it says Muse for You, awesome websites. And I just have to make this a bit wider here. So awesome websites fits on one line plus no code. Okay, so I'll preview in the browser. And as we can see, we don't have that text kind of typing and then going to the next line. It automatically starts at the next line. So that's using the break tag and it looks like this here. If I were to delete this, we'd notice it would type a bit differently. You see awesome starts typing and then it goes to the next line. So that's just a nice little feature there. Uh, using the break tag allows you to split the lines up within uh, the, the paragraph there. Um, so we've added the paragraph here. We've gone over the typing and I can change the cursor back to a line, holding down shift and uh, selecting that button right, right underneath the delete key. Looks good. All right, so we have that text box there. Now let's say I wanted to add another text box. What I would do is hit Command C to copy this widget and then hit Command V to paste again. And then here, what I would do is change the instance number. So each new text box requires a new instance number unless you wanted the same text within both text boxes, you would leave the instance number the same, but if you wanted different text and different styling, then you would change the instance number. So here I can simply change it to two and I can write something new in the text box. So I can say solo type automatic typing for your Adobe Muse website. Okay, I can change the color. Let me zoom out a bit here. Change the color there, the font size, basically change the entire styling of the text in here. And I can center the text as well. For the typing, I can change the speed. I 
can loop it. And for the cursor, I can change the cursor color as well. And the cursor opacity and the cursor speed, I'll make it a bit quicker. Cursor font size, I'll say four, and we'll leave the font weight there as well. So as we can see, it has very unique typing or different typing or different styling than this first text box. So if I preview, we're gonna have two typing, uh, typing widgets here and they type differently and look differently. And that's all by changing the instance number. All right, looks good. So the last thing I'll show is how to change the font within each of the text boxes. So if I select the first widget here to change the font, you just select the widget, then go to the built-in Adobe Muse text option here in the upper toolbar. Click the drop down, and from here, select any web font. It cannot be a system font. It has to be a web font. So I can change it to, let's say, Lotto for this one. And then I'll select this widget, go back into the text option, and I'll select Zebra Wood there. Okay, so I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. And as we can see, we have that unique font for each uh, solo type widget. Okay, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions about the widget, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You do have a lot of styling options with the text. Uh, you can change the typing speed, you can loop the typing, and you can change the cursor for the text. You can enable or disable the cursor as well. And I do have uh, references, references here for when using the widget. So 1EM equals 16 pixels. Each new solo type must have a unique instance number. To change the font type for the text, select the widget and then go to the built-in Adobe Muse text option in the upper toolbar. From here, you can select any web font from the fonts menu. Looks good. And again, to add a break, you would simply use the break tag. So uh, arrow, left arrow, BR, backslash, and right arrow. And there we go, I'll hit enter. And we'll preview one more time. There we go, we can see automatic typing started on the next line and looks good. If you find that the text doesn't finish typing, just make that widget container a little bit wider so that the widget registers that it can go to the next line or simply add a break tag. Okay, so that's it for this video tutorial. To get access to the solo type widget, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. The solo type widget is right here. And here you can click on the widget. Here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Here are the features included, the widget options on the left, the community section if you had any questions about the widget, the preview page to preview the widget, and this video will be right below the preview button. So that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.